Welcome everybody to Forza Motorsport 7 and today we're taking a look at the Top Gear car pack uh, but this is also part of a uh, big July update for the game as a whole and it also comes with uh, two free Porsches as well so uh, we'll be taking a look at, quick look at them as well and uh, yeah so that's nine new vehicles plus uh, plenty of the vehicles that you couldn't get in uh, just by normally going into the buy car section uh, where you could only get them via the uh, loot crates or uh, in special uh, for the fun events so you've got dozens more vehicles now to just buy and try out as well which is very good so uh, yeah this car pack is quite varied uh, starting off with this Alfa Romeo from 1958 I mean it's the first uh, normal road car from Alfa Romeo from the 50s that we've ever had in this game and uh, yeah this car among three or four others will get a review of their own and I uh, really look forward to driving it but yeah, it's easy to say that this is my uh, favourite from the car pack, and that's despite the fact that it's by far the slowest. But it's yeah, it's never really about speed or acceleration for me when it comes to enjoying a car. It's more about how I much I enjoy driving it that counts. So uh, yeah, this is going to get a review of its own, and then the next vehicle in this car pack is da -da -da, the 2018 Exo Motive Exo Set Sport V8 XP-5. Now this is, as you can see, a uh, a kit car through and through. You even can uh, get a, a DBR1 replica body to go over the lights of this if you so wish. And uh, yeah, as a result, it's quite lightweight because it is such a uh, kit car that is more about track performance and style, meaning it only weighs 1,696 pounds, so incredibly lightweight. And uh, because it's got a big V8 up front, it means it's got plenty of power going for it as well. 525 horsepower and 486 pounds-feet of torque from a 6.2-litre Chevrolet LSV LS3 V8. And, uh, yeah, it's rear-wheel drive. And, uh, yeah, it's taking everything out that you don't need uh, just so it can go as fast and as uh, quick as possible, especially around corners. And uh, yeah, it's got a T56 transmission connected to a Cadillac CTSV rear end. So uh, yeah, the Cadillac CTSV is by no means a bad car. So to have that rear end on this car makes such a light finger really rather nippy as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to take it out for a quick one lap uh, test drive. So uh, see you when we get there. Alright, so we're at the Road Atlanta full circuit. And uh, like I said, we'll just take this car around for one lap, see what it can do. So yeah, first the fact that it doesn't have doesn't have a body because the chassis is the bodywork itself, and uh, yeah, it doesn't even have a bonnet to cover up that V8. The lack of weight does mean that it's yeah, pretty damn good handling car, and uh, yeah, is able to use most of that power even though it's not the most powerful vehicle in this uh, car pack, or even with those two extra additional three Porsches, it's yeah pretty damn sharpish just because of the lack of weight and that means uh, good acceleration times 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds 0 to 100 in 5.7 seconds and going on to a top speed of 176 miles an hour which is pretty impressive considering yeah it doesn't really have any aerodynamics and it's got that big rear wing on it as well so uh, yeah all props to it now obviously this is a kit car so you would uh, build it yourself and uh, yeah I think that'll be a big task for me but I'm sure most people will be able to do it alright though the idea of driving around is something I had built even if I was up to scratch to build such a thing would be pretty terrifying for as far as I'm concerned would much rather it to be built by professionals but if you obviously do build it right you've got a cracking track day car on your hands one that would easily make mincemeat of cars that costs several times more than this, so uh, yeah, I can fully see why people would enjoy such a thing, though uh, me personally, I'd go for something that looks a little bit better and is a little bit less cumbersome in terms of how it go looks, but in terms of performance, there's very little in the way that would beat this, that's for sure. So yeah, let's uh, take a quick look at the next car, and then we've got another one after that to uh, try out onto the track, so let's uh, see what it is.
and this is the next vehicle in the Top Gear car pack, the 2017 Ferrari 812 Superfast. And uh, yeah, this is a replacement for the F12. And uh, yeah, the name itself suggests everything that you need to know about this car. And you can see that by the acceleration and the speed stats. And uh, yeah, power and torque is pretty damn high as well. Uh, this is easily one of the most powerful Ferraris ever. I think only the, the Ferrari uh, can beat this in terms of uh, pure horsepower and uh, yeah it's uh, got everything going for it that you'd expect from a Ferrari so yeah like the Alpha this will get a review of its own because it more than deserves it so uh, yeah let's take a quick look at the next vehicle and uh, yeah it's the uh, 2018 KTM number 22 True Racing Crossbow GT4 so yeah this is based on the uh, Crossbow R which this isn't as quick in terms of acceleration uh, but it does have way better handling and braking and a higher top speed because it's uh, more aerodynamic so let's just take a look at this in Forza Vista so uh, yeah pretty decent vehicle all around this this is easily one of the better track cars out there as far as I'm concerned just because I generally like the look of it and uh, handling and acceleration wise it's pretty damn good as well and that's somewhat down to the fact that it's got a uh, decent amount of power and torque so yeah 326 horsepower 295 pounds feet of torque from a 2 litre inline 4 turbocharged engine and the car itself only weighs 2,352 pounds now granted that is more weight than uh, the uh, crossbow R but it does have more power and uh, because it's you know more aerodynamic it's got a higher top speed so acceleration isn't as good as a crossbow R but everything else is better uh, in term including looks I certainly prefer this compared to looks and uh, yeah so uh, yeah let's get out there and see what it can do so we're at the Top Gear full circuit figured it would only be appropriate to come here at least once while reviewing a Top Gear car pack so yeah let's see what this uh, KTM can do not the quickest off the line due to the amount of grip that this car has but once you get going there's very little in the way that can keep up with this vehicle especially in terms of handling and braking oh dear, but as you can see you can still get it wrong which is typical of me quite frankly but yeah as long as you were uh, practiced with this car you could get some of the quickest laps out there from the car that you know granted doesn't have the most amount of power out there but neither does it have the most amount of weight and as soon as you learn how to handle this vehicle you will no doubt get some fairly quick time so yeah acceleration wise not to 16 3.9 seconds to 100 in 8.275 seconds and it goes to a top speed of 154 miles an hour which isn't awful by any means but it's by no means the quickest car out of this car pack but it's easily the best handling that's for sure so yeah i certainly prefer this to the crossbow r just in terms of looks alone never mind the fact that it handles and brakes a lot better and uh, therefore it's a lot easier car to handle and enjoy in general and uh, yeah it's certainly a step forward for KTM who uh, yeah we don't have many from them in terms of road vehicles uh, certainly in terms of actual cars normally we've uh, seen them like, uh, do bikes but uh, nonetheless if they continue with this rate they'll uh, soon be making actual road going uh, racing cars uh, so uh, yeah nonetheless let's get on to the next vehicle and this is the next vehicle, the 2018 McLaren 720S. Now I know pretty much the entire community has been looking forward to this car. And for them alone I am glad that it is in the game. Uh, but this, like the Alfa and the Ferrari, will get a review of its own. Uh, purely because, again, it's one of those most highly anticipated vehicles to come into this game via the uh, downloadable content. And uh, yeah, I have a few things to say of my own, but... As you can see, in the, in the stats alone, it is pretty damn quick, and uh, certainly is uh, fairly decent for handling and braking for the, for a road-going vehicle. Uh, now let's look at the next car. This is one of the ones that is actually uh, free to get, 
and it's a 2019 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. This again, like the uh, McLaren and the Ferrari and the Alpha, will get a review of its own. And uh, yeah, it's the I will say this: so the uh, most powerful GT3 RS ever from Porsche. And uh, yeah, also one of the uh, more extreme in terms of handling and braking as well. So uh, yeah, look forward to trying that out. Uh, the next vehicle all the way down again this is another one that is for free and it's a 1971 Porsche number 23 20 or more commonly nicknamed the pink pig not just because of its colour but it's also got as you can see meat cut uh, names cut out along it like you would see in a butcher's and uh, that's uh, pretty funny quite frankly especially from the Germans which aren't the most humorous, peop humorous people in the world uh, but nonetheless this is a uh, car that was a test bed for aerodynamics and engine components and the like and uh, yeah even though it never really never won a race it did uh, come at least seventh in qualifying at Le Mans but unfortunately it crashed and therefore not com uh, being able to complete the uh, 24 hours of Le Mans but nonetheless this is a uh, cracking car and uh, easily one of the rarest Porsches out there only one I think is in existence anymore even that is in a museum and uh, yeah it's got a uh, pretty powerful engine as well, 601 horsepower and 415 pounds feet of torque from a, uh, I think a 5 litre flat 12, it's not sure about the engine size, it could be a 4.5 or a 4.9, but I consider the fact that it's got more than 600 horsepower, it must be the more, the uh, higher cubic capacity of engine. And uh, yeah, with all that horsepower and torque, it only weighs 2,004 pounds, making this an extremely powerful and extremely lightweight vehicle, meaning acceleration and top speed are in no short supply so uh, yeah nonetheless we're going to go out onto the Le Mans on the full circuit and uh, see what it's actually capable of so uh, yeah see you when we get there so we shouldn't suffer the same fa uh, fate of the uh, car when this raced back in 1971 which was unfortunately brake failure because they uh, didn't take into consideration that this car use its brakes a lot more than the uh, standard 917 uh, but nonetheless yeah as you can see by no means a slouch it's easily one of the fastest car on cars on the game and, you know, granted it is a racing vehicle but nonetheless for a car from 1971 it is ballistic handles really well as well um, for a car that is basically an experiment to be uh, this good is uh, remarkable really it's just a shame it wasn't able to uh, prove itself in racing so yeah let's get onto this straight and just see what we can do in terms of top speed uh, acceleration wise though as you've seen is pretty sharpish 0 to 16 2.4 seconds and not to 104.8 seconds and we'll see the top speed in a minute but that not 60 times doesn't mean that this is the quickest car in the car pack despite being one of the older ones to uh, be featured and as you can see it's got a high rate of top speed for a car from the early 70s and apparently it will do 225 uh, pretty much there already. Yeah, we're at 224. But imagine 225 is not too hard to get if you've got a good enough wind and you're going downhill. But nonetheless, that is damn fast. Uh, handling is also great, and brakes are great as well. And again, this isn't just in terms of a car from 1971. This is in terms of cars in general be hard pressed to find a car that's just good in terms of acceleration and handling and braking while also having such a high rate of top speed. Usually there's a compromise in one of those areas to uh, be going in the rest. Whereas with this, no such thing whatsoever really. You can still get it wrong, like me. At least I can crash. <laughs> Not re replicating what happened in 1971 that's for sure.
thankfully at least this car did survive that crash and was able to be rebuilt and uh, kept in a museum. And I imagine if you are a Porsche enthusiast, you've been looking forward to this car being featured in the game for a while now. Me personally, I'd never heard of it before. But like a lot of the car packs before this, they've always featured cars in them which have uh, been unknown to me. And therefore discovering them has been a treat. And this has been a treat to discover. So yeah, glad it's in the game. And in Mogul that is actually uh, free. It's not even part of the car pack in general. It's a two-car Porsche Spotlight car pack, which, like I said, is for free. So you can try this out for yourself along with that new Porsche GT3 RS. Nonetheless, let's look at the uh, last two vehicles from the uh, car pack itself and uh, see what they've got going for them. And this is the next car, another Porsche, the 1964 Porsche 904 Carrera GTS. And like the other cars that I've already mentioned, this will get a review of its own because it did reignite Porsche's uh, sports racing uh, career after uh, trying out Formula 1. So uh, yeah, it will get a review of its own, but I will say this, for a car with only 190 horsepower, it's damn fast in terms of acceleration and uh, yeah, not too bad in terms of handling and braking either and it's easily one of the better looking uh, racing cars out there. And then finally, we'll uh, also be doing a review of this car, the uh, 2017 Vool 05RR. Now this is a car from Mexico, uh, probably their first um, track racing car outside of that one that was reviewed on Top Gear. And uh, yeah, damn impressive this car, really is. I initially thought, without looking at it, that it was a uh, all-wheel drive because it had such a good launch. But as you can see, it's rear-wheel drive, and uh, I think it's got such a good launch because it weighs so little, and yet it has so much torque and power. So uh, yeah, this was an absolute cracking vehicle to try out on my own, and I uh, look forward to reviewing it for you guys. So yeah, this rule, uh, the Porsche that I just looked at, the McLaren 720S, the Ferrari 812, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, and one. Yeah, that was it. Uh, we'll get a review of their own because I think they are uh, worth it and I have enough to talk about with them to uh, do a video of their own. But yeah, this is a car pack that me personally, I don't get much out of because quite frankly there's only a, about three cars that I enjoy. This Fool, the Ferrari and the uh, Alfa Romeo. But it's no doubt in a car pack that's also uh, kind of, you know, pandering to the community because definitely the community has wanted that McLaren in the game for a long time now uh, which I have no problem with I'm fine with other people getting just as much enjoyment out of cars as I get enjoyment out of cars but hopefully the uh, n final car pack that has been added on to the car pass will have a few more classics going for it because yeah that Alfa Romeo as great as it is doesn't make up quite for the fact that it's mainly modern cars in this car pack but nonetheless, it's a solid car pack, it's got a decent variety to it, and uh, yeah, it's certainly uh, offered up some cars, some new manufacturers as well, that we've not seen before, and uh, there's never anything wrong with that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.